Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Bits. We're going to talk about video games. I know, I know. I don't want to hear about that video games. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I, I got to talk about them. So, I have a huge backlog. A big backlog. And that's mainly due to the fact that I haven't really played like I used to. Now, back in the day, I think I had a problem where all I would do, I'd get home, play video games, and go to sleep. Now, lately, I've been playing a little bit more than I used to, but... I've accumulated this huge ass backlog to the point where now I have a spreadsheet of what I need to beat and <laughs> what order I need to beat them in and it's almost turned into a fucking job uh, trying to keep up with the, some of these games. Now some of these games I you know I've seen reviews for them and I've waited uh, it's almost been a year since some of these games came out but I'm finally getting to them like I haven't even got to play new Pokemon games are just sitting there, the Sonic Frontiers, uh, Deathloop, stuff like that. Haven't played them. Haven't played them. Uh, but I'm slowly catching up, I think. I'm, I'm getting there. So, last night I finished the game. It took me a while to beat it, and it's a short game. It, I should have beat it within, you know, a couple days. But it took me, I had it spread out for at least two or three weeks. And I find it, like... I've been playing that, but I've been spending a lot of time with Fortnite. But I found a game as a hidden gem. And I did not get much fanfare. And it's by a studio that's actually very underrated to me. Now, I love The Evil Within. I don't know if you guys played them, but they're really good. Uh, I believe it's Shinji Mikami who directed these. The guy who made Resident Evil, basically. Um, and they're very hard to explain story-wise. Uh, they are survival horror, but they're kind of more action-y. Uh, but actually a whole lot better than what came after Resident Evil 4. Which, by the way, the remake was awesome. Uh, I did play through that. But I've been playing a game called Ghostwire Tokyo. <coughs> now, it has, has some things going for it that, you know, frankly... I like a lot and don't like a lot. Number one, the one thing I really like about it is that it takes place in Japan. And it's, uh, you know, you get to roam the streets of Japan. I don't know how accurate it is because I, again, never been to Japan. But that's going to happen. It's going to happen. One day it's going to happen. Um, the story is very confusing. Very confusing. It's very strange. I can't really explain too much without spoiling it. It's one of those things you have to really... You really have to pay attention. Um, I mean, if I had to say it's one thing, if you wanted me to review it and compare it to something, I'm just going to say it's Japanese Ghostbusters. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's oversimplifying it. And it is. That's really oversimplifying it. it. The one thing I have against it, and I'm getting tired of it, maybe it's fatigue, is just, it's got an open world. Honestly, I don't think the game really needed an open world. It could have been a linear game with maybe larger maps. Kind of like Dead Island 2. Um, or Dead, Dead, yeah, Dead Island 2. I mean, it wasn't open world, but it had huge sections of the game where you can walk around as like semi open world but this game is open world for and I don't know why I don't know why they want it to be open world it doesn't really benefit the game uh, it has the trappings of an open world game kind of like and you have a map and it has all these icons all over it and it's cluttered and stuff like that just the usual trappings of even an Ubisoft open world game and, I, you know, aside from that, I liked it, right? I liked it a lot. I do I do like uh, the environment designs. I do like how they replicated Japan and Shibuya, Tokyo, all that stuff. It, it was really neat. It was really neat. Uh, you got to see, like, the little shops, uh, the stuff with the Japanese, uh, the yokai and stuff like that. It was, it was really pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Um, as me, like I said, I'm a huge, huge uh, hard on for Japan. I don't know why. I always have been. Like somebody will tell you, well, why do you want to go to Japan? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like I belong there. It's probably what it's going to be like. And hopefully, hopefully, it's not one of those cases like 
where you meet your hero and you get disappointed because he's a fucking douchebag. I hope it's not like that because I really do it. But I really like this game a lot. It was, it was really good, really good. Uh, it didn't get. I mean, it got fair reviews. It wasn't terrible. Um, you know, I honestly see what they was trying to do with it. Um, it was clumsy, um, a little bit, because it's just hard to fucking follow the story. Because, I mean, it's it's just weird. But that the ending is actually has a pretty cool ending. It's kind of bittersweet uh, if you put it together. And one, one way they put it together is environmental storytelling, which, you know, I like that. I do like that kind of storytelling. Um, Bioshock was really good at that. Um, so some of your bigger AAA games are really good at that, like mostly horror games. And Ghostwire Tokyo is a horror light game. It's, it's kind of scary, but not... Maybe to a younger audience, wasn't like gory or anything like that, and some of the characters look like Slenderman. But Tango GameWorks actually did a pretty good job. You can see the DNA of Evil Within in this game. Now I heard that prior to this fed, this game was going to be Evil Within Three, which I I, I see, I kind of see that, I see it a little bit. Like I said, it's got a little bit of the DNA in there, uh, especially how Evil Within 2 was. Had a semi-open world, um, but mainly linear. And that's kind of what this game is. It's it's an open world, but the story is fairly linear. Um, there's, there's side quests, uh, and they're usually pretty simple. Uh, the powers, I probably only unlocked like a couple of the powers. Like, I had a whole weapons wheel of powers, and I didn't even unlock half of them. Um, and I beat the game usually just using the fire, water, and wind. I was like Captain Planet, but not. <clears throat> but it was, it was a really good game. I think if you want to play it, and i, I got to tell you, this, this is another recommendation. If you don't want to spend the money, there's a couple ways you can play this game for not a lot of money. So next month, actually this month, Humble Bundle is releasing a new choice. And it's going to have Ghostwire Tokyo. So you're going to have Ghostwire Tokyo and a few other games for $13. And that's going to be on PC. Now, if you're on the console front, you can either buy it on PlayStation, uh, buy it full price on Xbox, or or if, you, if you're like me and you're playing it this way, which I bought the game on PlayStation 5 and didn't play it when it came out, and now I'm just finally getting to it. Uh, I started playing on Xbox via Game Pass. Now, I'm not getting paid by Microsoft to shill Game Pass, but Game Pass is a good way to do these things. Game Pass is pretty great. Um, but if you want to do it without spending that mu much money, and if you got a PC, do the humble choice thing this month. And if you don't, uh, Xbox Game Pass would be a great way to play it. Um, I, I think this game's worth worth Game Pass anyways. Maybe it's worth buying maybe for $20, $30. Uh, I wouldn't spend any more for it than that. Uh, don't be like me and buy it on launch day and never play it, which I think it came out last year, I think. But yeah, Ghostwire Tokyo is a hidden gem. I don't think it's going to set the world on fire, but I think it's going to be one of those games like in the next few years, you're going to look back on it and people will be like, you know what? That's a good game. That was, a, that was pretty good. It's underappreciated. So check it out if you haven't already. I, I think you will enjoy it if you're a gamer. And if you're a J Japan nerd like me, uh, definitely check it out. Because I think it's I think it's worth, worth the trip. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. I'll see you soon.